sleep disordered breathing isn't just a nuisance. It can significantly impact your overall health. And the number of people who have it is increasing. As a matter of fact, obstructive sleep apnea now affects at least 25 million adults in the U.S., according to the National Healthy Sleep Awareness Project. We have Dr. Philip Monteverde from the Bronson Sleep Health Specialist right here in Battle Creek and also in Portage with us right now. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, As we were discussing during the commercial, I, I know a little bit about this because it was almost 20 years ago I did the sleep study and uh, they found that I did have sleep apnea. And as my wife uh, insisted, I also snored a lot, <laughs> uh, although not very, not very consistently. Uh, so tell us, what, uh, what is sleep disordered breathing? What does that entail? Sure, sure. Uh, the term sleep disordered breathing encompasses sleep disorders that involve difficulty breathing during sleep. And as you mentioned, obstructive sleep apnea is the most common disorder of this type. However, there are a number of variations. Uh, just to name them. So we mentioned obstructive sleep apnea, uh, very prevalent in the general population, as you mentioned. Uh, there's central sleep apnea. There's sleep-related hypoventilation and hypoxemia, uh, snoring, sleep-related groaning, uh, to, to name them. Uh, but they're not mutually exclusive. They can coexist. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so you got to have more than one at the same time. You can. You can, unfortunately. So what are the signs then? I mean, my wife noticed that uh, I would just stop breathing or stop snoring, as it were, for, uh, you know, long periods of time, and then that was confirmed. Yes, yes. So the most common signs and symptoms, uh, like you mentioned, uh, the most common is snoring, but certainly not everyone who snores has sleep apnea and also vice versa. Other common signs and symptoms, uh, silent pauses in breathing. Uh, choking or gasping sounds while we're sleeping, uh, daytime sleepiness or fatigue, unrefreshing sleep, insomnia, difficulty with getting to sleep and staying asleep, waking up with headaches, nocturia, which is basically waking up in the middle of the night numerous times to have to go to the bathroom, difficulty concentrating, memory loss, decreased sexual desire, and irritability. Boy, that's a lot of things. And, and, you know, even so, doctor, you know, as, as somebody who'd been through this, I wanted to discount it. Oh, it can't be anything. I mean, what the heck? Yeah, everybody does that. Until all of a sudden I went and had the sleep study done and they could show me in black and white. Yeah, that's right. It, it definitely can negatively affect our quality and quantity of life as well. So as far as quality of life, Sleep disorder breathing can make you wake up in the morning not feeling rested, you're feeling still tired, and you're able, not able to function properly during the daytime. So that can affect your quality of life. Your quantity of life can also be affected as well because the lack of oxygen to your body can lead to negative long-term effects like high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, prediabetes, and diabetes, and also depression. So is it the same as it was 20 years ago? I mean, is the sleep study done in the lab exclusively, or are there new technologies? I mean, what could a person expect? There are, now, thankfully, yes. Uh, there are two main types of sleep studies that can be performed, and it depends on a person's history and their concurrent medical conditions. So you can either have an in-laboratory study, which is the routine, or a home sleep apnea test, or an HSAT. Both of these can monitor for obstructive sleep apnea. However, if there are significant medical conditions like heart failure, cardiac arrhythmia, lung dysfunction, uh, uh, certain neurological diseases, and we suspect other sleep disorders, uh, we would prefer the in-laboratory study because it's more complete and comprehensive. Uh, but as the name implies to the home sleep apnea test, that can be uh, reasonable to perform to see if you have obstructive sleep apnea. Talking with Dr. Philip Monteverde from Bronson Sleep Health Specialist. Uh, you know, I'd imagine if somebody's in denial or doesn't want to do the sleep study or doesn't want to go to the doctor, yeah, one thing that'd be easy to do uh, for a spouse is whip out their cell phone in the middle of the night and record about yeah. five minutes. Yes, yeah, so we definitely do have astute spouses who, who do that to, to prove because it's hard for us while we're sleeping to know because our sensors are off. So some rather astute spouses uh, do come in. Um, and play that for us uh, uh, to kind of tell on their spouses. 
Why is it a big deal, doctor? You talked about some symptoms that are pretty significant, but I mean, if it if gone untreated, what can we expect might happen? Unfortunately, yeah, increased risk for stroke and heart attack, cardiovascular disease, the negative effects on uh, blood pressure, um, unex- unexplained elevations in blood pressure, which can lead to significant uh, issues, uh, blood sugar, as I mentioned, uh, diabetes, prediabetes, uh, hormonal levels. So there is a pretty now long laundry list of uh, negative effects that sleep disorder breathing can have on us. There will be occasions, maybe once every six months, where I'll forget to put on my mask or I'll fall asleep before I put on my CPAP mask. The next day, I significantly can notice the difference. I'm tired. Uh, I uh, my throat doesn't feel as good. I have a lot of phlegm and 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 that sort of stuff. Uh, it really is a, an important thing in my life. Myself as well. I have severe sleep apnea. I've gone through this process as well. And yeah, I too derive much benefit from treating my sleep apnea. What's the first step then if somebody thinks they might have a problem, or if we have a spouse that listening and thinks that their spouse might have a problem, what should we do? Discuss your concerns with your primary provider, uh, and they may themselves order a sleep study or a sleep test if they're comfortable with doing that, or they may refer you to us in sleep medicine where we would certainly be honored to take care of you. Is it always a CPAP machine? Is that the only treatment, or do we have other treatments that we can explore now? There definitely, yes, thankfully are uh, alternative treatments. As it stands right now, uh, positive air pressure therapy, CPAP is one of those, is the most studied and the most effective therapy that we have. But there are, uh, depending on a patient's case, alternative treatments that are options out there, like uh, mandibular advancement devices, which are oral airway um, treatments. And then also some surgeries, as uh, we've been utilizing over the past and then also more recently here, uh, can be effective in treating sleep apnea as well. Dr. Philip Monteverde, Bronson Sleep Health Specialist, thanks so much for your time and all the great information today on our morning show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it.